What up? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this distressed grunge text effect in Photoshop in a series I call Hidden, short for How I Did That. Explain non-violently. I'm gonna show you two ways to accomplish this effect. The first way is 100% free, it's a lot slower, but the second way is a lot faster, but it costs a little bit of money. I'm gonna show you the free way first. Step one, we're gonna prep a displacement map. You can do this with any grunge texture you want. I gave you a link to a free download in the description. If you wanna use that one, you totally can. You'll get the exact same result as me. If you downloaded the one that I put in the description, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna to wanna to open this up in Photoshop. So all you gotta do is just click and drag it on the Photoshop icon. It'll open up for you right there. Now, if yours isn't already black and white, in the layers panel, you wanna come down here and click on this half circle menu, and then you wanna click on black and white. That'll make it black and white for you. Mine's already black and white, but after that, you wanna come back down to the exact same menu, click on levels. After you open up levels, you wanna be able to adjust the properties of levels. So if you don't see the properties window, you just go back up to window and then click on properties. In properties, I'm just gonna adjust these sliders so that it brightens up the whites and it kind of removes a lot of the grays in the background, but we still want to keep a lot of that there. And then after you kind of get it to a point where, you know, you have a lot of clear dark black specks in the grunge texture, and then you have grungy texture in between that's a little more gray. You want to come down here to this gradient bar from black to white, and you want to drag the one on the far left a little more to the right until the black point is a lot more gray. So there's nothing that's like really deep black anymore in this texture. And then after you get that, it kind of looks good to me. So we want to press file save as and then you'll be able to save it as a texture. So I'm just gonna name this um, grunge texture. And stupid past me forgot to mention that you gotta save this texture as a PSD, a Photoshop document file, or else the rest of this tutorial is just not gonna work. So make sure you do that. All right, back to the tutorial. Step two, we're gonna set up the Photoshop canvas. You wanna go up to file, new, and then type in your canvas dimensions. I'm just gonna do 1080 by 1350 because that's the Instagram dimensions and I'm gonna name this grunge tutorial. You can make this canvas size anything you want, but if you just wanna learn how to make this effect, it's best if you stick with the same canvas size as I did, 1080 by 1350, and you'll get the exact same results. Step four, you wanna bring in a dark background. You can use any background you want. I gave you a free one in the description that I made that I'm gonna be using for this tutorial. Once you download it, you just wanna drag it down to the Photoshop canvas and it'll stick there and then you press enter to place it and that's that for the background. Step five, we wanna add in some text. So you wanna come over here to the horizontal type tool and then click anywhere on the canvas and then start typing. I'm gonna type in all is vanity. Uh, mine is extremely small right now. So I'm gonna click on this check mark up here and then I'm gonna press command or control T and then it'll allow me to drag up and make it bigger. Step six is actually making the grunge effect. So in the layers panel, you wanna select the text layer. Then you wanna come down here to FX and then click stroke. We're gonna add a 50 pixel stroke to the outside and we wanna make sure that the fill color is black, pure black. And then you just click okay. And then you should see something like this around your text. And then you wanna right click on that same layer and then click convert to smart object. Once it's converted to a smart object, we can start adding the smart filters to it that we can edit later. So you wanna come up to filter with that same layer selected. And then you wanna go down to blur and add a Gaussian blur. This is really gonna determine how sharp the edges are gonna be. This is really up to your discretion, but I'm just gonna leave it something fairly low, like around five pixels. And then with the same layer selected, I'm gonna come up to image, adjustments, then come down to threshold. Now threshold, you can play around with this as much as you want as well. I'm going to actually crank it down so that some of these letters start touching each other and, and bleeding into each other. And that kind of adds a really cool effect that I like. You can choose whatever you wanna do, click okay. And then I'm gonna come up to filter again with that same layer selected, come down to pixelate and crystallize. Crystallize is gonna give it this rough edge that looks really nice. I would advise keeping the cell size really small. So for this small canvas size, I'm just gonna keep it at cell size three and it looks really subtle, but it really brings home that grunge effect. And then the next thing that we're gonna wanna do, we're gonna wanna double click on this layer. We don't wanna double click on the text or else that's gonna edit the text. We don't wanna double click on the icon or it's gonna bring you into the smart object. We wanna click on this empty area between the name of the layer and the far right. So that opens up this layer style panel. We wanna come under this blend if gray area. Under this layer, we wanna drag this tick 
over to around like 150 i would say is pretty good click ok basically all that did was that made the black invisible in this layer as it's being blended with the rest of the layers and now the most important part is we want to use the displacement map that we just created right so we want to come back up to filter with that same layer selected i want to go down to distort and then displace now these settings you're going to want to play with based on your grunge texture i'm going to stick with 30 and 30 if you don't like the results, you can always edit it because we made it a smart filter and I'll show you how to do that. But I'm gonna leave it at 30, 30, stretch to fit, repeat edge pixels and embed file data in smart object. I'm gonna click okay and then it's gonna ask you to choose the file that is the displacement map. Let's click on that grunge texture, click open. And look, it's already giving that really, really nice grunge effect that makes it feel distressed and imperfect, which is what we're going for. We're getting really close here and that's essentially the entire grunge effect but we're going to do a few more things that i think really bring it home and really bring the whole piece together so that you can blend it into an existing design really well but before we do that if you don't like how your displacement map displaced the letters then you can actually go back into the layers panel and under this layer if you don't see any all of these other filters under it you just have to click this down arrow up here double click on displace and then you can change these settings to whatever you want and then when you click OK again, you just have to select that same grunge texture, that displacement map, and then it'll change the results for you based on the numbers that you change. So you can just tweak the horizontal scale, the vertical scale. If you tweak those two numbers enough, you should be able to land somewhere that you like. OK, now step seven, bringing it to the next level. In the layers panel, let's click on that exact same layer that we've been working on this whole time. Let's right click on it. Let's make another smart object out of it. And then we want to go back up to filter and click on liquify. Now this is going to open a new liquify window. And with this tool selected, the forward warp tool, we want to start warping this text. Okay. The brush size, you can control this over here in the top right properties, or you can use keyboard shortcuts to change this on a Mac. It's control option, left click. And if you drag left or right, it's going to affect the size. And then if you drag up or down, it's going to affect the hardness of the brush or the pressure of the brush. In this case, if you're on windows, I believe it's like alt right click drag, but don't quote me on that. Just make sure you use these brush tool options and you want to make sure that the size is decently large and then you can play around with the density and pressure. But basically I like to keep the brush size pretty large and we're just going to make some minor adjustments. We don't want to do something crazy like this, not for this. I'm just gonna kind of click and drag and then you'll see the text start to distort this way. Um, it's kind of the vibe that I'm going for is like a subtle, like a subtle distortion. And then once you're done with the adjustments that you want, you just click okay. And then it's gonna apply them here. And then in the layers panel with that same layer selected, we wanna come down to the bottom to the square with the circle in it. We're gonna click on that going to add a layer mask and then we want to get our brush tool by pressing B and then we want to make sure it's a soft brush and the brush color is pure black and then with a soft brush that's really big and you want to make sure the opacity is maybe around like 70 you want to start erasing some parts of this uh, this lettering and really you want to make it feel subtle kind of treat it like you're shading instead of erasing. That just helps give it a little bit of depth. But on top of that, what I'm going to do is back in the layers panel, I'm going to select this layer. I'm going to press command or control G that groups it. And I'm going to add another mask on top of it. And then I'm going to take a brush tool again, but this time the blending mode of the brush itself, I'm going to change to dissolve. And then I'm going to decrease the size of the brush a little bit. And then I'm just going to click in a few places to add in a little, just a little bit of noise to really drive home the grunge effect. The smaller that the brush size is, the uh, more fine the dots will become. So I'm just gonna add that in there a little bit. I kinda like how that feels. And then I'm gonna come over here with that original text layer that we've been working on within that group. I'm gonna make a copy by clicking and dragging. And then I'm gonna right click on that. I'm gonna convert to smart object. I'm gonna change the blending mode to soft light. And then I'm gonna go back up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to add kind of a subtle blur to this that kind of just lightens it up and gives it a really subtle glow that I dig. And now it's looking pretty close. It's looking pretty decent, but we're just going to add a few more finishing touches. So that's step eight, finishing touches. We're going to add some noise. Okay. You want to come back down in the layers panel to the bottom with that same menu with the adjustment layers. We want to click on it and go up to solid color, go to pure black. You want to make sure it's at the very top, drag it to the very top of the layers panel. You want to right click that you want to rasterize that layer 
And then you want to go up to filter, noise, add noise. So you can basically choose however much you want, but I like to strike a balance between pure black and like really obviously staticky noise. I'm going to be, do something a little more subtle, maybe around, uh, maybe around here. Uh, and then click OK. And then you want to just go to that same layer and then change the blending mode to soft light. And then we want to change the opacity and adjust it according to what we what we like. I personally like to add a lot of noise. So if you zoom in, you'll see a lot of that detail there that I like. And then on top of that, we're going to add a grunge texture. So why not use the original grunge texture that we downloaded? So the one that you downloaded from my description, let's just drag that original one in before we made it into a displacement map. I'm going to place the texture in here. I'm going to click and rotate this. I'm going to hold shift so that it locks to 45 degree increments. Come up to a corner and hold alt or option and drag that corner. So it scales, I'm gonna press enter to place that. And right now it's black dots on a white background. Our background is already black. Putting black dots on a black background is not gonna really add much grunge. So I'm actually gonna invert this first. Press command I or control I and that'll invert it. And then I'm going to change the blending mode of that layer to something like screen. And then I'm gonna bring down the opacity to somewhere that I like. And uh, I think I like around 25. And that's the slow way to do it. And that'll get you really excellent results every single time. 100% free way to do it. Here's a fast way to do it if you're willing to spend a little bit of money. Black Market actually came out with an action pack that takes you through all of these steps with one click and applies it to the layer and everything. So you don't have to go through all of those millions of steps that I just walked you through for the grunge texture. All you have to do is come to blackmarket.co and I put the link in the description and then get this trash machine and it'll come with this action file that you just want to load into Photoshop using the help documents that they provide with it. It'll have a bunch of these actions that you can use to automatically apply the effect. All right, I'm just going to walk you through this so you can see how much faster it really is. I'm going to click on that text layer. I'm going to come down to the actions panel, click on custom quick under trash machine. I'm going to click play. It brings up the Gaussian blur. I'm going to drag that to where I like it. The threshold, I'm going to do the same thing there. I'm going to click OK. The cell size came up. I'm going to choose three. Displace, I'm going to go up to type in 30, 30. And they actually give you displacement maps one through 10 and they're all different, but they're all pre-prepped. So you don't have to do anything extra to them or prepare anything in advance. I'm just gonna choose four, click open, and it gives you the effect. Now this is maybe a little bit too much. I'm gonna double click on displace, bring it down to maybe 10, and then go to four. And it gives you the same effect. It's way easier, way quicker. You don't have to remember all the steps. It just brings you through everything and then gives you the pop-up so you can dial in the effects that you want and they have different versions of it. There's a custom advanced version that'll let you choose more complex blurs. And then there's custom one without any displacement if you wanna add a really subtle grunge effect. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of time saved with this product. So if you're interested in doing that and you wanna save your time and you don't wanna remember how to do this every single time or open up my tutorial, which you know, I'm okay with you coming back and rewatching this every time. That's cool for me. But if you want to save your time forever and not have to remember it, check out the link in my description. You can get it there and that's going to save you a ton of time. All right, that's it. If you use this tutorial to make anything, just tag me at Edward Creates. That's where I am everywhere. But I am going to make more videos. I'm sorry for taking a whole year between uploads, but um, I am planning to not do that anymore and have only less time between uploads. <laughs> so... That's it. Peace.